your character George is a bit of an LGBTQ icon. Well, it uh, remains to be. Uh, well, he he is. He, he does exist. Yes, as as an icon, and I hope will continue to be so after the show comes out. But um, no, I think I, I it that's that was actually a really interesting thing to discover. You know, this him being such a you know uh, from the 1600s. You know, um, he, you you might doubt his sort of relevancy today, but um, you know, I, I, he's actually mentioned in in the book of. Um, of uh, a movie I did, uh, Red, White, and Royal Blue, which is a really interesting sort of tether between the two, which is, yeah. He's, very, mentioned, he's in mentioned in it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so that was a, personally very gratifying. My son, if we tread right, we rule the planet. Let us seize what should be ours. So King James. So man struck. It's like a curse. I don't know that I am as um, inventive as as Mary Villiers mm. was. You know, I mean, she's someone who kind of grabbed at every opportunity, um, and and was was lived in a place that was um, as as a female person relatively low status. You know, so she did only had only had autonomy through her marriages. You know, or agency through her marriages and her children. So I don't. I, th I think that what she did was really crazy because, like I said, I might have just rolled over and died. I, I, think, I, <laughs> I, think, I think most of us would feel the same yeah. way. I think that's what's so unique about the story is yeah. we are not all those people who, right. who have that now and that want to, to ascend in that way. Yeah. So, yeah, probably die of some, some horrible disease yeah. myself. Um, <laughs> you and childbirth, <laughs> me and disease, smallpox. Yeah, small yeah. Exactly. Oops. Will you find me a wife? I'm sure you have just the girl in mind. Mm, I think we aim higher. James dines soon at Apthorpe with his brother-in-law, the Danish king, and a new friend tells me there are openings for cupbearers. You want me to hold a man's cup while he swallows? I'll leave the specifics to you, but it's not a man. It's a king. So, are you ready for his majesty or not? I think people who do that are using their kids as proxies, right? They're 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 living through them, and mm. I think that she sees in George what she would like—a kind of access to the world. You know, he's male, he's good looking, he's charming, and she really believes that that's what you know that that's how you succeed. She sees a way forward. She's a way to the top, and so she she lives through him and she partners with him. And yeah, it's not particularly it's not particularly healthy. May I perform for you? That was actually a really interesting thing to discover. You know, this him being such a you know uh, from the 1600s. You know, um, he, you you might doubt his sort of relevancy today, but um, you know, I, I, he's actually mentioned in in the book of um, of uh, a movie I did, uh, Red, White, and Royal Blue, which is a really interesting sort of tether between the two. Which is yeah, he's, very, mentioned, he's in mentioned in it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so so that was a, personally very gratifying. Get me a moment with the Queen. I told you she hates me. How do I? The Queen? She hates Somerset more. She may hate you, but let her hold her nose as you explain that this is the chance to replace Somerset in the King's bed. And risk death when Somerset finds out. You are mad and wild. Oh, possibly. But I've lived a sane, tame life waiting for change, and it does not come unless you grab opportunity by the hand and never let go. In this, I just had wonderful, wonderful coach named Jella Hurley, who was there with me every day. I got very, very attached to her. We'd see each other on the weekends, go through the week's work, and then she was there and would listen to me. And and I listened to people on the street, and I listened to my coworkers, and I, you know, um, and I lived in a state of abject terror, thinking that I would get it wrong and hoping that someone would tell me if it was wrong. But it was a, it was an interesting challenge. So thank you very much. Oh, it was perfect. Also swearing in an English accent. Oh, yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Very good as well, isn't it? <laughs> I think it's a little bit better than swearing in an American accent. Do you? Maybe I think we yeah. do it a bit better. If I'm honest. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Give the king whatever he wants. He will be yours, mine, ours. I will not be caged. Well, it's, it's funny, I remember our, our director of the first three, Oliver Hermanis, um, we went out for dinner before we started and he, he, he kind of said to me, 
There's a lot of sex scenes in this. Are you, you're definitely okay with this. And I, I, you know, I think it, luckily it's something that I've done uh, over the years. And I think that, um, you know, you, you, you kind of put aside your own anxieties. I think the, the moment they, they call action and, and, you know, if you've done the research on your character, if you fully have invested in who they are and who they need to be on screen, then, um, you know, someone like George who carries this poise with him, you're, you're able to kind of uh, become someone else in those moments and you don't feel the sort of the trepidation of all these strange people uh, watching you. Um, so I, I don't want to say it was, it was, it was easy or I, I felt at ease necessarily, but um, we had an incredible cast and crew and, um, and the, the, the scenes were handled so well by our intimacy coordinator, Robbie Taylor Hunt. And um, I think the shot in a particularly beautiful way, I think both Judy's and, and my own, um, I'm very proud of. I was raised by a monster. Only children believe in monsters. 